What's up, guys? Welcome back to the WCS America Challenger League. Axel Toss here, joined by Axlab. Currently watching some StarCraft 2, trying to find out who's going to come closer to reaching that Premier League of, uh, of Season 2 of WCS America. And by the way, guys, make sure you get on Twitter, hashtag WCS, and you'll see your tweets on the screen if they're good enough and if they don't contain bad words. Also, you get involved with Team Liquid, Reddit, have some fun on the community sites. But that being said, currently got a best of three series on our hands between Telia and Kapach. Kapach is currently up 1-0. Very nice timing build there. He did very early in the game. Telia scouted it, but maybe just didn't quite catch it mm -hmm. quite in time to, to get the appropriate counter up to deal with that type of push. Game two is going to be Neo Planet S. And, and this map, she is going with Terran. Correct. So, so we're going to have a PVT, so so nobody get confused. Like, Axel Toss, Axel Lab, you guys are doing it wrong. The races are wrong. No, Telia is a, is a random player, so choosing to, to switch her race from Zerg to Terran in game number two. And here we are on Neo Planet S. In the bottom left-hand location, we have the red Protoss player who went for a crafty Four gate timing push in game one, securing his victory. Hailing from Argentina, he is Kapach. His opponent in the top right hand location, your blue Terran player who played Zerg in game number one. She is 18 years old, hailing from New Zealand, representing team My Intent. She is Telia. So Neo Planet S uh, versus Terran. I, I kind of like picking Terran here. I think it's uh, it's a good map for Terran versus Protoss because it's pretty difficult for Protoss to take a third base on. Of course, Kapach is more known for these very aggressive builds uh, in every matchup, actually. So maybe he's not so worried about taking a third base. Maybe this actually isn't the best map uh, to play Terran against him. But at least Tilly will kind of know what she has to deal with. She has to deal with something, one base or two base is going to come at her, and it's going to be very difficult to stop. You know, what would be very difficult for me if I was playing Tilly is uh, vetoing maps. Because if you don't necessarily know what, what race your opponent is going to play, it can be very hard, in my opinion, as a Protoss player, to veto, right? Because you don't, all right, is she going to play Zerg? Is she going to play Terran? He doesn't necessarily know until the game actually happens. This is true. Um, but he also, I, I think that's that's something to think about. Uh, right. But Kapach is also a very timing-based player, so we could just say, like, okay, I'm going to give you a Daybreak, I'm going to veto, you know, the maps that, that aren't so good for, for timing builds. Sure. Um, Belshire, Vestige, maybe. Um, we'll see. It, it is really annoying, though, actually. Or it's, it's more difficult. Of course, that's a fairly minor difficulty added, put on to Kapach, relative to the fact that Tilly has to learn all these matchups, right? Right. So, um, I mean, that, that is why there's almost no one at the competitive level who actually does play multiple races uh, in tournaments. She's pretty much the only one at this level who does so. So, uh, kind of an impressive decision and, and feat to try to take on. There was a Korean player who played random. Yes, early on. Um, that was really early on in StarCraft 2. Uh, for some reason, my the and name actually, is escaping me. There's one who did it early on in, in, in Brood War as well, actually, and then he switched to Zerg later on. Um, and I'm just really bad with names. Yeah, me too. Um, like a part of me wants to say Genius for some reason, but I know that's not Nah, true. it wasn't Genius. Uh, I'm yeah. think, maybe I'm thinking of the team. It, was it? Um, nah, it doesn't matter. So anyways, two Reapers yes. coming out from Tilia. So this is an interesting note. She, she actually just mined 100 gas. It's like she's playing Zerg. You mine 100 gas to get Zerg and speed to take map control. Yep. Why not do that with Terran? Yeah. You mine uh, 150 gas for the reactor and two Reapers take map control. Same thing, right? Exactly. I mean, most Terran players would, would scream in outrage at that thought, but um, apparently Tilia thinks this is this is the way to do it. And you know what? It's I kind of like it, to yeah. be honest. A lot more mineral income. You know what I would really like? If she just took a third command center right now. That would be... That would be awesome. I would be the biggest Tilly fan if she just, boom, straight. I mean, constant Marine SCV production, right? But this, don't build anything besides Marine SCVs and depots from here right now. Stalker's kind of straying away from the natural expansion. There's oh, two the main is so vulnerable here. They're going to get some probe kills. Absolutely. The probe's uh, running for their lives. Two Reapers trying to decide, all right, who, which, one are, which one are we going to target, man? Get one kill. Get two probe kills. And targeting down the sentry here. One Reaper might fall. Oh. 
pulling a switcheroo there. Oh, it's got to watch when it jumps Gosh. down. Okay. Getting away. Pulling it close. But, you know, the mining time lost there and uh, two kills, not bad. Yeah. I think that is definitely fine. Two probe kills, not losing a Reaper. Getting some scouting intel, seeing the Ze Zealot Stalker Sentry. Also seeing standard stuff, Gateway Core. Seeing that natural right now. All right. So it looks like a forge has been thrown down here from Kapot. Two probes, actually one probe getting targeted down by the two Reapers. One force field going down, gonna be trapping one of the guys. And the other one might fall too. Yep. Oh man. Dead. So that just went from pretty good to not so good. That, that, that is not what you want to have, have happen to those Reapers. They're not only your scouting, but they're also your ability to contain the Protoss opponent. They have to be on the defensive to deny the Reaper harass. And now, you know, the Tilly is in the dark. I mean, Kapach is in the dark too, but he was bound to be in the dark anyway until he can get hallucination. Yeah, I mean, I feel like as a Terran player, it, it's more up to you to figure out uh, it, exactly what the opponent's tech progress is. It really is. And, and the Reapers are, are basically that utility. It means you don't have to use scans. You don't have to try to sneak an SCV inside. But now Telia, you know, might, might be expending a scan fairly soon, which, of course, means uh, a lack of one mule. Or Tilia might have to do something like get an extra safety bunker because she's scared of, uh, of an attack, um, which, in, in fact, she is doing. So So I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Now, Kapach has not gone for a robo. Uh, of course, you know, he's able to see the two Reapers. But he's following, his opening involves a forge and a cannon in his main mineral line. What, what do you make of that decision instead of, uh, you know, potentially getting a robo done? It's one of my favorite builds. Um, uh, this is? Yeah. Oh. I, I actually, I mean, it's kind of weird because normally I get the forge before the second gateway and it's a little bit faster. But of course, that's the two reapers kind of messed up his timing. So everything's a little bit later than, than ideally, of course, just because of the, uh, the opening. Uh, but yeah, the, the idea is that you really want to get ahead and upgrade. You, you you take advantage of the fact that you're pretty much immune to early pressure to get an upgrade advantage early on. Sure. Uh, but then, of course, in the same token, how do you stop a Woodamon drop? You actually, like, you have to build the cannons if there's any chance a Woodamon drop could be coming, uh, or else you're, you're just going to die. Um, or you're going to lose, like, so, even if you feed probes one at a time to Woodamons perfectly, it's it's the amount of uh, income you'll be losing until you get detection. It's just such a big hit. And it's nice to get the, the cannons are later to defend drops as well. Uh, and Kapach, instead of having an observer, he just set a hallucinated phoenix to try to find out what's going on. So it's three barracks on Engineering Bay. Did not get to glance any factories, so doesn't necessarily know about the existence of the factory at the natural, but can kind of guess it's somewhere. But, you know, hasn't necessarily been able to identify, okay, my opponent is making tanks, which is exactly what Telia is doing. The cool thing about Kapacha's opening is it lends itself so well to uh, a two armor, or you can go double forge, you can go two two. But basically, a charge a lot archon or charge out storm uh, timing off, off of two bases. Because skipping the robo and not getting the observers, while it's, it kind of puts you in the dark, hard deal drops, it also means you can get a lot more units out a lot faster. Uh, so he's actually he's not going for that exact time because he's getting a second forge. He's going to have one two upgrades in storm. Maybe just gonna play a macro game without observers, which is a little bit tricky. Actually, no. He, I mean, he hasn't. He's not continuing to build probes, and he's having a lot of gateways. So we probably will see some aggression coming out of him once he gets charged, storm, and these upgrades. Four gates on the field, adding on one more. Tilia is 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 moving out with intent to. This to, is a scary timing. It is, and and the thing, what beats a whole lot of Marines and SCVs. Area. Storm. Yeah, area effect, and, and there's no there's no area effect. This is like the perfect timing, because look at all these resources currently clogged up in researching stuff that's not helping Kapach yet. Plus two armor, plus one weapons, storm, charge, not done, but Telia is not going to just go directly in, which I think if, if she had gone directly in. Photon overcharge and, and force fields can be scary in that choke. Um, so I, I don't blame her doing the contain. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a safer play. This is what uh, MVP actually just destroyed Sase horribly yeah. earlier today using using pretty much exclusively builds very similar to this. And and the cool thing is the counter, like the way to counter a lot of Marines is with Storm or with Colossite or with Force Fields if there's no Medivacs. But if there's tanks, those can to get the Force Fields as well. So she's just going to sit here and contain them. And, you know, Storm is great against Marines, but if they're in bunkers, it's not quite as great. Gosh. And I don't, I don't actually know if you could have stopped those bunkers from getting up. I don't think he could have moved out. Yeah. I think he had to just 
I think it could have defended probably if she charged in because of the the choke and force fields at that small choke. But this is like the Great Wall of Oh, Houston. storms from oh, the high ground. Storm under the Marines. Melted a few of them. One more storm to take out that siege tank. Charge is done. Plus two armor is done as well. Another storm going down. Kapot trying to push out of this containment. But so many bunkers are here. The Zealots melting away in an instant. And Telia has a 111 to 56 supply lead. I have a feeling I know what Terrans are going to start doing on ladder against me. I mean, if they didn't see MVP Versace, at least yeah. they're seeing this. And, and man, this is a, a brutal push. Uh, to try to abuse the Protoss, being extra greedy, relying on Photon Overcharge. And it's not like you can just go for a base trade or something. No, yeah. You, you, I mean, that, that is actually what Sase tried. Oh, um, okay. It was I, I stopped watching after the bunkers yeah. got up. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he, he, he had a pylon. He tried to warp in like eight cells at a time, but MVP spotted it because he's good at scouting. And he actually kept his bunker back as natural. Oh! Oh, that's... That's a devastating scan. That's not good. So what does Kapach do from here? I mean... It, I guess he has to go for the base trade. He has to get a war prism. To be, he doesn't even have the robo started yet, so. And there's a drop in his main too now. Um, some marines coming in the back of there. Uh, this should be defended with the cannon without too much of a problem, but. Uh, I guess he can hope Tilia s maybe salvages the bunkers and. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see her doing that. I don't think it's. It, it's she's too I impatient. I have a great position. Let's give it up. Yeah. I, I, I've seen actually Terrence do that before. Um, Really? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't leave if I was Kapach. I'd wait in and hope that happens. Um, or maybe uh, the other thing is you hope that she's not continuing her upgrades. And so if you get good enough upgrades that the Marines actually don't even touch the Zelts, you know, you can kind of maybe overwhelm it with, with Zelts and great upgrades. Like, if you if you just kind of tries to survive and wait for plus three armor, you know, if she doesn't continue her upgrades, maybe. Um, or I, I, yeah. It, it could happen. Crazier things have happened. Uh, more, more Templar getting. Yep. So from Tilia, she just needs to sit on three bases. One of the biggest mistakes you can do here as a Terran player, actually, is get too greedy. There's no need to expand across the map. As long as you're base up, you, you're going to starve them out. What the only need to do is scout for hidden Protoss expansions, which yes. I actually would like to see her do. Um, I mean, it's unlikely, but who knows, right? Uh, and then just slowly grind the Protoss out. Oh, trying to storm those Marines. Yeah, Zealots charging forward. Gonna pick those guys up. Faking in between dropping in the natural and dropping in the main base. Now, this is definitely a, a map dependent build, I think. What other maps do you think this would work on? This bunker could be? It's good on um, Star Station. Yeah. Um, not quite as good on Whirlwind. Or Daybreak. This is crazy. It's hard to get in, into those positions in World 1 Daybreak. Yeah. So the, that one bunker is, is probably going to go down. You know, if if I think Kapatz is going to wait till 3 armor and then he's going to go. And actually, I mean, he's been fighting, if he times it perfectly, he'll be fighting 1-1 one, one Marines. You're actually, it may happen. I mean, the Zealots are going to be 2-3 versus 1-1. One, one. That's a massive upgrade advantage Kapatz has. Uh, the bunkers are rough. I, I feel like he, if he could somehow get a... F I mean, it's, how is he going to set up a flank, right? He has no robo. Right. It would take so long to build it and then to build a warp and to warp in enough units, so... Oh, here he goes. Plus three armor's not yet done, but he's going anyway. It's moments away from finishing the Zealots all clumping up. Storm's going down onto the Marines. The tank's trying to get their damage done. Plus three armor is still not done. There we go. Finally finished, but all the Zealots are gone. Delia is going to be just fine. No big deal. There's the GG from Kapach. Telia using a bunker contain to carry her to victory in game two, which is going to even up the series one to one. Um, pretty crazy strategy there. And it's, it's interesting because if we're thinking about the metagame right now in PVT, Protosses are just placing so much of their safety into that mothership core, and they're just doing whatever they want, right? Just double forge, teching everywhere. They're like, oh, I have a photo, I have Mother's Report, but the number charge, it doesn't matter. Terrans have been doing pushes to try to exploit that. It's not working. So now I feel like Terrans might start doing this a lot more where they're like, all right, I won't necessarily engage into your natural, but I'll make sure you can't ever, 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 ever take a third. Sorry, billion bunkers. Can it work? You know, that's key, a billion bunkers. Uh, yes. You really want three, four bunkers is fine to start out, but if they're tech and greedy, their army is going to be so much better than yours because they're going to have those massive upgrade advantages. And if she literally only had three bunkers, he would have broken it right. when, he, when he came out again. Because uh, Storm is, is, is so good. 
you basically want to have almost no Marines not in bunkers. Uh, <laughs> make sure they're all uh, basically have their little roof over their head because yes. you know weather's gonna be bad if you want to ghost. Exactly, storms very scary, um, very good against Marines. Uh, but guys, that's gonna wrap up game two. We have a tie series once again on our hands in match number two of the night. It's Kelia versus Kapach. Game three, WCS America coming up.